The Luncheon Kingdom may have been the weakest kingdom in Mario Odyssey, in my opinion, but that doesn't keep it from having some very interesting cultural inspirations as well as some curious questions we can explore involving its land. So, why is the lava pink? What type of cheese is this? And what in the world is going on with the Fork People? That's what we're going to discover today on Noggin. So, Mario and Cappy come out of the Odyssey in the Luncheon Kingdom, and the very first thing you notice is just how dang colorful it is. My god, it hurts. It's so bright, it's it's quite garish, frankly. At first, you don't really know what this pink goop is either. You just know that it's really, really hot. But then, according to the travel pamphlet, the lava bubbles, and various moon location descriptions, it is indeed lava. It even shoots out of the volcano. But then what sort of lava is pink? Well, the inspirations of this land may have the answers. So you know that hand thing that Italians stereotypically do? That may seem a bit out of the blue, but bear with me. So that hand thing, you know, you gotta put the pizza sauce in the pasta! That whole thing? Well, it looks to me that that's what these fork people are doing when they talk. Plus, they all have these red ascots, typical of chefs from Italy. And all of that combined with the Roman pillars leads me to believe that this land is inspired by Pompeii, Italy, an ancient Roman city that was famously destroyed by a volcano, that volcano being Mount Vesuvius. Which, come to think of it, the volcano in the Luncheon Kingdom is called Mount Valbono. Those Vs. Maybe it really is based on that. This land is completely flooded with pink lava, essentially destroying any ruins that were there before much like Pompeii's volcanic destruction. But why would the lava be pink? Well, if this land is based on Pompeii, Italy, it may be because of the many pink things surrounding Italian geography and geology. First up, we have Pink Beach. Located just off the shores of Italy lays a small atoll known as Budelli. This lush atoll is home to purple rocks and clear turquoise water. And strikingly, it also has a pink beach. The beach is actually made up of tiny bits of coral, crystals, and fossilized marine animals. Think prawns and such. And because of this beach's naturally pink sand, it's heavily guarded to make sure people don't steal it. But sand isn't the only reason the lava is pink. It can't be. No, there are many other pink landmarks in Italy such as the pink rocks known as Vivusanite. Hmm, that name by the way. <laughs> yep, you guessed it, it's named after the volcano Mount Vesuvius, the very same one that Volbano is based on. This mineral can be commonly found in various shades of green, much like Volbono itself but it can also be found in a very rich pink hue. While it is found elsewhere in the world, like good old Canada, one of the first sightings of this pink and green stone was, of course, on Mount Vesuvius, hence the name. But these aren't the only pink rocks found in Italy. There are a few more, actually. There are many pink granite formations that exist in or near Italy. In fact, one type of pink granite, Maddalena granite, is rather well known. From the Southern Alps all the way to the shores, you can find small clusters of pink granite with dots of white. There's a reason Italian granite costs so much more. The colors are so much more unique. Also, Italy also has the world's largest pink rabbit. So there's that. But I know what some of you geologists know already. Making a pink rock molten, of course, does not make the lava pink. At least, not in the real world. You could just apply some Mario magic and there you go. But let's go deeper. There has to be more to it. Well, let's see. This whole land is based on food. Maybe the lava is also inspired by food. But what Italian food is a soupy pink? And would that have anything to do with Pompeii and Mount Vesuvius specifically? Well, not surprisingly, yes and yes. And the easy answer is beets. You know, that weird root that America never seems to eat that much? You'd be surprised how many of these guys get eaten around the globe. Russia alone produced over 30 million tons of them last year. Whoa. And many people don't realize that the little red beets are the same species as the larger white sugar beets. The small red beets also have a knack for making everything that you put them in extremely red or, you guessed it, pink. I mean, oh my word, look at this borscht. It's so pink! The inspiration is very clearly there. And it just so happens that these beets were extremely popular in Pompeii way back in the day of the Romans. And this is because the Romans believed that beets promoted the feeling of love, or acted as an aphrodisiac. You would find tons of beets in the local brothels of Pompeii for sure. Plus, brothels and lovemaking were one of the things that made Pompeii so famous. Besides, you know, the volcano killing them all. 
So it's a spiral effect. Beats were super popular in brothels in Pompeii, which in turn led to beets becoming really popular in all of Rome and Italy. Even though they couldn't actually grow there, they all had to be imported from the north. The north, which just so happens to be the origin of this pink borscht. So while beets are not a mainstay of Italian cuisine, and neither is this beet soup, the pink lava still has its roots in Pompeii and Roman culture. You could even say that there were some gigantic beets that happened to fall into the lava, or are growing underground and the lava touches the beets. Because I mean, look at the size of this turnip. There's, there, there can totally be some giant beets down there, you never know. Also, fun fact, while researching all this, I found out that the soup that they're making on top of the volcano is actually what's known as Italian wedding soup. I mean, because Bowser's going around grabbing wedding stuff. I mean, easy, obvious, duh. It's just another link to this being based on Italy. And now that we know what the soup and lava are, the next huge monumental question you've all been waiting for the answer to is next. And this is possibly the biggest question I had when playing through Super Mario Odyssey. What cheese is this cheese? The travel brochure explains that this cheese is in fact hardened by the surrounding lava's heat. So we're looking for a cheese that gets hard and resists mold growth. It has the iconic holes of Swiss, but we've already established that Nintendo is basing this whole land off of Italy. Italy was rather well known for their cheeses. At least, I love me some Italian food with cheese on it, eh Luigi? Luigi! For starters, this cheese is yellow, and that could get rid of like a million cheeses, like Parmesan and mozzarella. But more importantly, this cheese is hard. Like, really hard. So we could be looking for some aged cheese. None of that young stuff. Though come to think of it, I'm not sure what makes cheese hard. So let's go over that real quick. Maybe that'll help us narrow down the cheese species. All cheese starts off as a liquid. Some from cows, some from goats, some from coconuts. I know, vegans, right? But what really happens with the cheese juice? Well, first, lactic acid bacteria converts milk sugar into lactic acid. In the second stage, which overlaps with the first one, rene, an extract of calf stomach, or to be more precise, chymosin, a protein found in this extract, curdles the casein proteins and the watery whey is drained from the concentrated curds. And finally, in the third stage, the cheese ripens, and a whole host of different enzymes do all sorts of things to the flavor and texture. It's a science for sure. Like, I'm not even sure how humans figured all that out in ancient times. Like, I guess they were just really, really bored with no internet, so they started throwing things together to see what worked. The coagulation also affects the hardness of the cheese. A more acidic coagulation leads to a softer cheese, and the mostly Rene-based coagulation leads to firmer curds and harder cheeses. Draining the whey also strongly affects the final texture. Pressing the cheese firmly expels much more of the whey, and thus leads to a harder cheese. Softer cheeses are allowed to drain some way by gravity, but there's another important factor here. Heat. Some cheeses are cooked in their whey stage, to a temperature as high as 55 C, or 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And that would get you a fairly hard Parmesan. Or you could cook your cheese at about 38 C, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, for some somewhat softer Tomes cheese. The Luncheon Kingdom travel guide states that the cheese is dried or cured, in this case, by the intense heat of the lava or soup. No, 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 it is lava. It's just soup-colored lava. There we go. Sorry, I got confused there. Well, considering we're curing the cheese here with the heat of lava, that means that this must be some of the hardest cheese in the world. As for actual cheese, the title of hardest cheese in the world belongs to chirpy cheese, which is found in many parts of Tibet. This cheese is hard enough to last in your mouth for about two hours before finally chewing your way through it. Almost like cheese gum that, that you eat, so... Okay, okay, maybe not like cheese gum. Hmm. Well, maybe that's actually too hard. And come to think of it, the color is wrong, and also Tibet is in Italy. That, that's a big one. No, I think that cheese that you need frying pans to break, that title seems to go more towards Asiago. Specifically, a harder than normal Asiago. Asiago fits pretty well, too. It's got the small holes and cracks that the blocks have, and more importantly, it too is Italian. This cheese was originally made from whole and skim milk, then cooked, crumbled, and cooked a second time. The color varies from mild yellow to a soft cream color 
and the hardness is hard enough that you wouldn't just cut through it, rather you'd need to chip off pieces. There's a reason it's called a cheese wedge. Also, if you leave your Asiago cheese out by a volcano, I'm pretty sure it will get a bit harder than under normal circumstances, so the hardness of this cheese must be altered by the lava. The only problem now is that Asiago doesn't get as yellow as this cheese, but as it turns out, Naturally, yellow cheese doesn't really exist. Yellow and orange cheeses are dyed cheese. Cheese is made from white milk, after all. What in it would make it super yellow or orange? Nothing. But why dye the cheese? Well, it all started with cheese fat content. The more fat used in making a cheese, the better the cheese. And also, the more slightly yellow tinted the cheese would be. But only slight. Think butter. Yeah, that slight. So again, the more slightly yellow the cheese, the better it is. Thus, the better the cheese, the more you can sell it for. So, the yellower the cheese, the more you can sell it for. So, cheese started being dyed. And then competitors would dye their cheese more. And then those competitors would dye their cheese even more. And so on and so forth until you start getting yellow and orange cheeses. So, these cheese rocks are dyed, extra hardened chunks of Asiago that have been left out on the volcano for who knows how long. Sounds delicious, I suppose. So, now you know why the lava is pink and what kind of cheese the Luncheon Kingdom is home to, as well as why the four people do this weird thing with their hands. I'm sure you'll be able to impress your friends with your astounding knowledge. So go and tell them that you now know how to use your noggin. And then show them this video, share it around, you know, the usual YouTube video ending phrases and all that. Woo! And until next time, never stop using your noggin.